of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. O loving Jesus, we surrender all of us unto your sacred heart and we pray that your sacred heart may be opened. Your precious blood may flow out to sanctify us, to purify us. If there is anything that hinders us from listening to your voice, O Lord, we pray, take it away in your name. The power, the glory of your name may be revealed in our life right now. O Lord, strengthen us with your word. Empower us with your word. Purify us with your word. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let's listen to a passage from the Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 4, verses from 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him, to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple saying to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down for it is written he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone jesus said to him again it is written do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, it is really wonderful and beautiful to reflect on this passage. Because the Gospel is speaking about the temptations that happened in the life of Jesus. As we are going through the season of Lent, and as we are preparing ourselves for the passion and the suffering of Jesus, Surely this passage will give us a great lesson. There is a word in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 7. Return to me and I will return to you. And also we will see, we will come across almost a similar word in the letter of St. James, chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Why we are praying before Jesus? Even now, why we are listening to the word of God? Because we want to be close to him. Though we are going through all these struggles, though we are going through a lot of temptations in our daily life, surely we have a thirst to be close to Jesus. Surely when we go through this passage, when we reflect on the gospel, the Lord also has gone through great temptations in his life. The word used is this. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This word temptation it is always having a negative connotation. It always means seduce a person to commit a sin or to entice a person with something attractive, persuade someone to go in wrong ways. But if we are going into the root of this word, it is a Greek word, little difficult. But if we are going into the root of this word, there we will see the word testing instead of the word temptation. That means Jesus was not being tempted, but he was 
being tested. The Lord was overcoming this testing in his life. It happens in everyone's life. Dear brothers and sisters, Abba Father was preparing Jesus for a great mission. And surely before this great mission, this testing was something very essential. The Lord was getting strengthened through this kind of a testing. So we also have to learn in our life. A testing happens or a temptation happens in our life not to make us commit a sin, but to make us do something good. A temptation happens not to weaken us, but to make us stronger and stronger. It happened in the life of Jesus. And also, the word is very important. It tells us Jesus was being led to the wilderness. We know wilderness is a place where there is no one else. That means Jesus was all alone in the presence of Abba Father. That is also something very essential. We also will be having so many plans in our life. We all have a lot of dreams in our life. But we have to ask ourselves, do we spend time in the presence of God before we do something? So many people come here for the retreats to Thabor. And sometimes some of them will be coming and telling us, Father, I have been trying a lot to achieve it. I have been trying a lot to get a job or to do something else, but I have never succeeded. Dear friends, we have to ask ourselves why it happens. Because we do not go to the wilderness. That means we do not spend time alone in the presence of God. If we are talking to God, if we are giving ourselves to his voice in this kind of loneliness, surely we will be able to achieve anything that we aim in our life. Because St. Paul tells us, we know the word, the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13. I will be able to do everything through the one who strengthens me. So if we are depending on God, if we are listening to him, surely we will be able to do everything through him who will strengthen us. So spend time alone in the presence of God. That is what the life of Jesus tells us. Once a person asked Mother Teresa, we all love Mother Teresa. Once a person asked her, you are serving these many people. There are people who are approaching death, who are counting their days. There are people who are having very severe sores on their body. People who go through great unimaginable suffering. You are able to love every one of them. You are able to serve all of them. How it happens? Then mother said, I cannot give you the answer now. But if you come to my convent early in the morning, I will tell you how I am able to do this. This person heard it, listened to it. The next day morning, early in the morning, he went to the convent. And he was searching for Mother Teresa. Then someone there showed a place. The place was the chapel of the convent. That person went there and he could see such a beautiful scene before his eyes. Even before sunrise, hours before sunrise, Mother had already knelt down before the Blessed Sacrament. She was carrying the rosary in her hand and she was praying before Jesus. Then mother whispered into his ears, this is the place where I get the strength from. This is how I am able to do everything in my life. I am able to love everyone who comes to me. So dear brothers and sisters, if you are having certain plans in your life, if you have some dreams, surely like Jesus, spend some time alone in the presence of God. Surely he will strengthen you. He will help you. When we go through the gospel according to Luke, chapter 19, verses from 1 to 10, there we see the life of Sakes, a very familiar passage for all of us. 
Jesus was moving through the village called Jericho. And also many people were going along with him. Whenever we go through the Gospels, it happens. Many people are making their journey with Jesus. Here also the case was not different. And this person, Zacchaeus, he had all the material gains, fortunes. He was a tax collector. He was rich. But even then, he had an emptiness in his heart. So the word tells us he wanted to see who Jesus was and what he was doing. He ran ahead of the crowd because he knew if he had remained along with the crowd, he would never be able to see Jesus. So he ran ahead. And also he climbed a sycamore tree and he was waiting on the top of the tree for Jesus. Something very beautiful. That means this person was alone on the top of the tree. Jesus saw him. Jesus told him, hurry, come down. Today I must stay at your house. And also later, the entire family was blessed. Sometimes when we are going through certain struggles, it is very essential to spend time alone in the presence of Jesus. Surely that will bring about great transformation, great change in our life. And also dear brothers and sisters, when we go through the temptations that happened in the life of Jesus, there is something very particular that we should note. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 onwards. There we read about the baptism of Jesus. That means the passage that comes just before it. The baptism of Jesus. What happened at the time of baptism? The heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit rested on Jesus. And also a voice was heard. The voice was this. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. So it was really a glorious time. And also Abba Father was well pleased in Jesus. Really a glorious, a wonderful time in the life of Jesus. And immediately after the baptism, immediately after the glory that Jesus received, this happened. That means the temptations happened in his life. It also tells us something very significant. Sometimes we also will be having very great times in our life. We also will be having certain glory. But we should be vigilant. We should be so careful in every glory we have. Because some struggles, some crosses will be awaiting us later. It happened in the life of Jesus. As we know, as we are going higher and higher, the depth will be more. The depth will be more. So we have to be very careful in that case. Jesus had a glorious time and immediately the temptations happened. When we go through the Old Testament, the first book of Kings, chapter 18, verses from 17 to 14. There we read about Elijah. And Elijah was challenging the prophets of Baal. That means he was giving a courageous witness to, to Yahweh, to his God. And we know he slaughtered all the prophets of Baal. That means he was such a courageous person. But later, immediately after that event, what happened? The wicked Jezebel, the queen, came to know what he had done. And she was seeking his life. She was planning to kill Elijah. And later we will see Elijah was fleeing for his life. She was going through great struggle. And also he did not have any more courage. He was totally frightened, afraid. That means we all will be having this kind of great times. But also later difficult times. We will have to go through this kind of struggles, this kind of difficult times. So it is very essential to be careful, to be vigilant. Somewhere I read in this way, eternal vigilance is the price of freedom. That means we cannot be 
too relaxed at any time of our life. If we are too relaxed, surely the tempter will come, the evil spirit will come and he will take control of our life. So dear brothers and sisters, it should not happen. And also the three temptations Jesus came across, if we go through them, they also are giving us great lessons. The first temptation was this. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The temptation was this. Make these stones bread. Surely Jesus was really hungry. That means he was fasting for 40 days. He was really hungry. But even then, Jesus said, I will not do it. When we go through the gospel according to Matthew chapter 14, there we will see the multiplication of the bread. That means the Lord was feeding 5,000 people just with five loaves of bread. What happened there? The disciples came forward. They put forward a suggestion. Let us send them away into some villages because they are really hungry. Let them go to some villages. They will quench their hunger there and then they will come back. But Jesus said, they need not go away. I will satisfy them. Dear brothers and sisters, it happened. At the end of that passage, we read, they took 12 baskets full of the broken pieces and then they went home. That means the Lord was satisfying people. The Lord was quenching their hunger in this way. But even then, Jesus did not do it for himself. That means the Lord was always serving others. The Lord was always loving others. And he was doing everything for others, not for himself. Sometimes, we also will be having so many blessings in our life. We also will be having so many capacities, so many talents. We should ask ourselves whether I should use it for my sake or for the sake of others. Dear brothers and sisters, the life of Jesus teaches every one of us that we should use our blessings, we should use our talents, our capacities for the sake of others, not for ourselves. There is a word in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 7. The first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 7. The word is this. What do you have? that you did not receive and if you received it why do you boast as if it were not a gift saint paul reminds us everything in our life has been gifted by god everything in our life we have received out of the mercy of god if we have this realization if we have this conviction dear brothers and sisters we will be using our blessings our talents for the sake of others, not for ourselves. And the second temptation was this. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. That means the devil was asking Jesus, throw yourself down to do something sensational, something miraculous. If Jesus had done it, what will happen? The people will be watching it and they all will follow Jesus. But he did not do it because he knew it was not the way to attract people. It was not the way to make all of them follow him. Dear brothers and sisters, he was not willing to do anything sensational and attract people. We have to ask ourselves, are we trying to attract others to us? If we do so, then we do not follow the way of Jesus. Then the third temptation was this. And also one more thing, where this temptation was happening, the word tells us, 
the tempter, the devil placed Jesus on the pinnacle of the temple. That means the temptation was happening in a holy place. Sometimes when we listen to the word of God, when we are going to the church or when we are going to a retreat center, some of us will be too relaxed. And we may think that nothing is going to affect me here. Nothing will be touching me here. But that is not true. Dear brothers and sisters, the temptation will happen even in holy places. So we have to be very careful everywhere. We cannot be that relaxed in our life. And the third temptation was this. The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Here, the devil was indirectly telling Jesus, Have a compromise. Why you are struggling a lot? Why you are fighting with me? Have a compromise. Come to terms with me. Don't pitch your demands so high. Dear friends, we also will be listening to such tempting voice. We'll be hearing such tempting voice in our life. Why you are fighting with me? Why you are struggling in this way? Have a compromise. But if we are going to have a compromise with the evil one, with sin, what will happen? The gospel according to John chapter 10 verse 10 will tell us, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Whenever the Bible is speaking about committing sin, it also speaks about death. That means we will lose our life. We will be disappointed. Surely it will happen. And also we, we have to keep one more thing in our mind, in our heart. The devil left him. But it was not forever. Again, Jesus was going through temptations many times in his life. When we go through the gospel according to Matthew chapter 16, there we will see Simon Peter was telling Jesus, let it not happen to you. The Lord was speaking about the cross, his suffering. Peter told, God forbid it, let it not happen to you. There also Jesus told, away with you, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. And he was praying in the Mount of Olives, the gospel according to Luke chapter 22. There how Jesus was praying, the gospel according to Luke chapter 22, was 39, 39 onwards. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Dear friends, there also the Lord was going through great temptation because he prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup. But immediately he also prayed, but not my will, yours be done. So Jesus overcame temptation, but it was not forever. The same way, even if we are overcoming certain temptations, the another one will be waiting. So always be very careful and to get strengthened, to be empowered, spend time alone in the presence of Abba Father, Jesus. Surely that will help us a lot. When we are having some great times, do not be too relaxed because some struggles will be awaiting us. That is how the temptations of Jesus tell us. That is how the temptations, the life of Jesus teaches us. So dear brothers and sisters, may God bless all of us. Amen.